Ezreal awak di situ. Mesti dah tutup tu kena tak keluar dah. Betul. Saya nak cakap apa? Nampak tak? Saya ni memang tak ingat tau. Memang ada betul nak tak ingat. Ada tu nak tak ingat. Doktor doktor nak bina tu dah. Saya tak tahu dah apa kebaikan dia. Kena buat live ke? Tak buat live tak boleh eh? Tak boleh eh? Next week siapa? Next week ada Azwin Azwin siapa? Ada Jio Alamak Macam ni ni? Macam ni kot ni? Tak boleh ke pindahkan? Memang kena nampak kopi eh Okay je Tapi tu lah ada penyakit pelupa sikit eh Dah nampak Okay 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 Boleh start je Oh ya Allah Hai Okay boleh Saya pun nak ambil phone Saya terlupa ni Ada sesuatu Awak kan rajin Sebut make up Tada Propa sikit kan Kedah kan Tak lah Tak lah tak make up lah Ni je Tu je Tengok tak tak cakap Tak cakap bawa habis semua Oh, rajin yang bantu Tapi tadi tak siap-siap ni <laughs> Kan tak, ya, eh, Sekelah tu pun dah seminggu kan Saya tengok Hai Dah Okay Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Kita tengah Dengan ini okay, okay. okay, Assalamualaikum And a very good morning to all Okay, first of all, uh, I want to say thank you for inviting me to the nice coffee talk and uh, thank you as well for those who are willing to come. Okay, and uh, let me introduce myself first. Uh, my name is Dr. Nur Hafiza uh, binti Maklisa. So, I graduated from Universiti Pendidikan Serta Idris uh, since 2013. Uh, I finished my Bachelor in Education Physics. Uh, within four years and after that I continue my study in PhD Physics uh, 2013 until 2016 so uh, within three years uh, I have been nominated as uh, best thesis and best oral presenter so I submit my thesis on uh, September 2016 and I got the Senate on 2017 so uh, on my graduation day, I have been awarded as a best um, student, uh, so-called Anugrah Bitara. So, okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, okay, my life is so lucky because since uh, my submission thesis, I have been offered as a teacher at Sekolah Menengah Teknik Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra. So I've been teach there uh, about one year and a half. 2016 November until 2017 and with God wills I have been offered as a lecturer at School of Physics in USM 2018 okay so for now I have been assigned as a uh, to teach the modern physics for first and second year student so basically in modern physics we will study five chapters uh, including of 
special activity uh, and then uh, the uh, properties of wave like uh, and then the experimental evidence uh, and then uh, the bonds uh, what else models of atoms and so on and you from the modern physics you will know how the electron is jetted and this you will study on the photoelectric effect and Compton effect and you will know how you will characterize the electron or atom uh, for example, by, uh, by using the X-ray X -ray diffraction instrument. So, but for today, I'm not going to teach or give you a lecture on modern physics. So, I want to share uh, a little bit about my research uh, about graphene uh, and its application. So, uh, generally, I am involved in nanotechnology, uh, but maybe you already heard about the nanotechnology. So, maybe some of you can give me... Uh, the meaning uh, what can you define about the nanotechnology is can some of you one of you no 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 technology okay that's good okay it's great uh, anyone anybody no <laughs> the nano and technology give you two different meanings technology we are live in a technology and the technology is upgraded year by year so without technology we can feel the difficulty right without phone without internet we can we can get the we can uh, have the difficulty to communicate with others so but what is a nano so in simply we can say uh, that nano uh, you can imagine uh, pieces of hair selai rambut is div uh, divided or cut into 1000 pieces so how small is this, right? The nanotechnology. So nanotechnology. So uh, one of my question is, who has uh, come up the term nanotechnology? Maybe you have studied about nanotechnology. You have heard about nanotechnology, but who has come up the term, the first term of nanotechnology? No idea. No idea. Okay. Good answer. <laughs> okay, Richard Feynman. Richard Feynman is a father of nanotechnology. Uh, for him. He said that nanotechnology is comprises of science, uh, technology, and engineering, which conducted at nanoscale within the range of one to hundred nanometers. Okay, and then uh, you can search the YouTube uh, about his talk, "The Plenty of Room at Bottom," by Richard Feynman, and uh, by oh. You you have learned about the microscope. You know the microscope is uh, observing the materials, but uh, how you can uh, observe the atoms or molecules? You know what is the first development or instrument that can observe the nano scale uh, atom? Electron microscope. Other? No idea. No idea. Scanning tunneling microscope. Scanning tunneling microscope. So you can go and search by your own what is scanning tunneling microscope because tunneling you or you also uh, will study in modern physics how the electron tunnel uh, all right electron tunneling or uh, the cut off frequency so you can go further in modern physics all right so the scanning tunneling microscope is the first development that began the nanotechnology all right so uh, back, uh, back to my research, uh, what I'm done is graphene. So I'm involved in carbon base. My ex lab mates, we are handling the carbon base. You know what is carbon? C. C. Yes, very good C. <laughs> so what is C? What is carbon base? You know the diamond. You know the graphite. That um, berlian, graphite, nasty, that family, kan? So you are fa uh, very familiar about that. So this kind of things is included in the carbon base. My lab mates uh, handling the carbon base, uh, we are utilizing the waste materials such as cooking palm oil, uh, chicken fat, uh, engine oil, and as well as minyak longkang. Eh, kita, uh, we utilize to uh, uh, what we call to synthesize uh, the carbon. So we got the carbon nanotubes. That one is carbon nanotubes. So carbon is comprised of many carbon uh, shape like carbon nanotubes, uh, fully rings, like a buckyballs and graphene as well. So graphite. So my research is graphene. Uh, why I choose graphene? Because graphene is the fastest growing nanomaterials and this material possesses uh, outstanding properties such as high carrier mobilities, uh, high electrical conductivities, 
uh, high transparency sheets and this material is the strongest material ever made. So because of this, I have uh, I plan to synthesize graphene. So uh, basically for synthesizing method, we have uh, two methods or two approaches uh, which are bottom up and top down. So my, you have heard before? Bottom up and top down. So my research, I, I'm done about the uh, top down. All right, from top down. So what I did in my research is I just used two pieces of graphite rod immersed in the deionized water and by giving a certain applied voltage. You know the electrolysis? So like that, just like that. Okay, but my novelty here is I see that uh, by using uh, this method, electrolysis, we know that they will produce the uh, oxygen and hydrogen at the cathode and anode. So I'm not uh, getting the graphene, singular graphene, but I'm getting the graphene outside uh, by using electrochemical exfoliation method. And I see that graphene outside also possesses the same uh, properties like graphene, but if we can uh, control the, the manufacturing or the synthesizing uh, parameters. So uh, I think that uh, my graphene outside can be used as a nanofiller in composite. So at this case, I have choose natural bubble latex, you know, susu getah, susu getah, okay. So, uh, can you uh, give me, uh, maybe you have some idea, uh, what the reason why I choose the natural bubble latex in my research. Because we are similar with the uh, non-conductive, because natural bubble latex is non-conductive. My graphene is uh, conductive. So why I choose these kind of materials? Do you have any idea? No, you don't have any idea why I choose this material. Okay, first of all, we know that we are among the biggest producer of natural bubble latex. Okay, kita adalah negara ketiga after uh, Thailand, which uh, which country producing uh, latex. So, uh, instead of that, you know the price of latex? Very cheap. How cheap? To the point where those producing latex <laughs> cannot have enough income. <laughs> okay, actually, eh, for 1 kg of natural bubble latex, susu getah, uh, we can only buy RM5 ringgit, 1 kg. As compared to the synthetic or the conductive polymers uh, outside there, they are 200 ml, it can reach up to 5,000 ringgit measure. So, this is why I choose the natural bubble latex. One, because of we are the biggest producer, easy to assess naturally, freely or cheapest. And uh, in addition of that, uh, I see the natural bubble latex is water soluble. Because of my graphene oxide production is a water-based medium, so I use natural bubble latex to, because I see the compatibility is uh, higher there. So I implement, I uh, introduce uh, graphene oxide and natural bubble latex. And what is the novelty of my research is, I introduce graphene oxide in situ with the uh, natural latex. Where by using uh, by running the electrolysis or electrochemical exfoliation method, I introducing the natural latex. Can you imagine? So, so the two materials is uh, composited in the in the container. So this project has been presented and in ITEC. Uh, 2014 and I got a uh, silver medal and this project has been published in Q1 journals. So while well, those who are familiar with the publication, you know, Q1 journals. So, uh, and we also have uh, MOU or the what we call Perjanjian with Lembaga Ketan Malaysia, Rubber Industry uh, to make collaboration about natural black tax. But uh, this project has been handled by my friend because they want me to to produce a graphene which is compatible and will not uh, uh, what we call uh, it will not uh, transform the the color of latex of milky latex into the black because we know graphene is black uh, black carbon is black so when we uh, depositing the graphene into the latex they don't want uh, the black color. Because they want uh, me to make a glove to repel the blood. So that one uh, I've passed to my friends <laughs> because I see the potential of my nanocomposites uh, as a electrode potential. 
electrode materials uh, in supercapacitor. You know the supercapacitor, the energy storage uh, devices. So I use this material and I convert the uh, insulator of natural latex into the conductive uh, nanocomposite. So I can use uh, this nanocomposite to, uh, as an electrode material in supercapacitor as energy storage. And I managed to get um, maybe 300 far per gram at that time. So that one is... Uh, also has been present, uh, sorry, has been published in Q1 paper, journals, uh, and then uh, this is part of the one part of my research on graphene. So I, I exploiting graphene in electrode materials, and I also exploiting graphene in semiconductor dye sensitized solar cells. I also use graphene. Uh, my graphene in dissertation solar cell where I reduce my graphene oxide by using hydrazine hydrate uh, into the um, RGO la, reduce graphene oxide and I use as a counter electrode you know what is dissertation solar cell? yes you know uh, mainly dissertation solar cell is comprised of uh, three components uh, photo anode uh, counter electrode and uh, what else? electrolyte right uh, in the middle so I I try to implement uh, apply my graphene RGO as a counter electrode in the dye solar cells and this project has been published in Optic uh, also in okay in Q1 or I I could remember uh, I Q1 and Q3 so uh, my PhD is all about the graphene and I the application is in supercapacitor and dye solar cells as well. So I hope, uh, my hope is I want to further, uh, I want to continue my uh, research on the functionalization of graphene and with graphene oxide by using a uh, surfactant. Oh yeah, before I'm not, uh, before I'm not forget, uh, I have also involved the surfactant. You know what is surfactant? Uh, we surfactant stabilizer. You don't know because, or you don't like chemistry, <laughs> because I'm more to the synthesizing. So to say, it's, uh, it's including both physics and chemistry. Okay, so uh, until now, uh, I think uh, the potential of natural rubber in rubber industry has gained many interests, and as well as the dye solar cells for graphene. Uh, I think um, maybe we have. Q&A or what because I have left my research for many years huh? so you have any question or don't ask me about modern <laughs> don't ask me about modern physics so if you are interested or interesting about my research you can uh, go and see me lah and at my room okay um, I think that's all about my research Graphene? Yes. Why, why we need to study on graphene? Oh, why I, I need? Oh, you need? <laughs> why we have study on graphene? Because I have stated before that graphene has possesses uh, outstanding properties such as uh, high transparency sheets, it can make a conductive film, uh, graphene is the strongest material, uh, uh, graphene uh, is um, what we call... Um, uh, it possesses uh, electron high electron transport where it electrically conductive so easy easy to make uh, because uh, nowadays industry uh, want us to to come up with uh, something cheap but for now I think graphene is 1 gram for 300 ringgit so 1 gram Depends on the. Yep. Yep. Yes. Oh, you are handling graphene? Uh, yes, I'm, my research is uh, graphene using low cost Oh. Not the. Tape. Scotch tape. Not the scotch tape. <laughs> but uh, FST, interface graphene. Oh, okay. My partner is doing ECG, electrochemical graphene. Oh, okay. So, the is very, uh, is very important. 
Oh, because uh, in my since my during my PhD, I have uh, do many research on uh, method. So I have used electrochemical explosion method. I have used CVD as well. I've compared the Hammer's method as well. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I use tools method because Hammer's method is quite dangerous. Yeah, quite dangerous. Okay. Um, but SIT is relatively new, about 2013. Yeah. So I'm trying to expand on the process. Oh, okay. So the difference is mechanical solution, so it's not as easy. You can get a steam gap in, but it cannot be last. Yes, that's a problem. You can get the the high quality of graphene, but uh, in a small quantity, just a small quantity. Uh, but it uh, can possibly be used as a mineral composite. Um, yeah. My group are on both sides, electrical and thermal. Yeah, one okay. One side is using graphene as a graphene ink. The other is using as a tip thermal interface material. Oh, okay, okay. Because graphene uh, shows many properties that can be implemented in main various wide range of applications, such as nano electronics. Uh, we can use graphene uh, in nano composite. We can use graphene in conductive films, uh, molecular gas sensors. So uh, I think by compositing. Oh, okay, okay. Oh, okay. What I'm done in the disinfectant solar cells is I platinum free. I don't use platinum at all. I just replace uh, with my RGO, but I use surfactant stabilizer, homemade surfactant TC14. So this surfactant has three branches, so uh, it may help to increase the compatibility and it increase the high surface activity. So that's uh, my research uh, area. Okay. Ah. You are doing graphene, sir? Okay. So you are in what application? Oh, all right. Oh, okay. So what is your efficiency now for your graphene? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Uh, so, uh, what is your opinion on how undergraduates approach this graphene research? How do we start <laughs> our career? Oh, actually, uh, I'm here to inspire you <laughs> to continue your your study in graphene, uh, yeah, to nanomaterials. The only thing I know about graphene for undergraduate is the one group is doing it. Oh, okay. FYP? Yes. Under? Under Dr. Yam. Dr. Yam, okay. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, in the SM, there are two, mainly two lectures. One, one is Dr. Yam on the experimental side and Prof. Bibi on the theoretical side. Oh, okay. Lecture, already, uh, okay, Prof. Zubi, theoretical. Oh, okay. okay so any more questions? Any questions? Okay. Uh, so if you want to study about nanotechnology, do you have to have a knowledge about chemistry? Or uh, sorry? If you want to study about nanotechnology, yes. do you have to learn chemistry? Or? Yeah, of course. Of course. If you are in the part. Because we are not in the engineering part. Okay? We are the fundamental. We will study the fundamental study. So you, you have to love to study physics and chemistry. <laughs> Actually, you have to love to study uh, science stream since secondary school. <laughs> okay, so uh, but if you are a physics student, uh, the chemistry part is not uh, necessary for you. You will combine or you co cooperate with the chemistry school. Uh, that's uh, that's how I work. We have collaboration with oh, okay, that's good. Yes. Yes, the knowledge in. From, uh, from my experience, the experimental part is almost purely chemistry. Yes, of course. Even uh, the theory part is uh, touch about more on physics. Yes, yes. The, the only physics part is explaining how it works. Yes, 
about the instruments. That's that's why I I stress about the XRD just now. How did the drone is ejected? How is the drone is tunnel? So that's the physics. That's the physics. <laughs> okay, characterization part for decentralizing. Uh, for sure, we are involved in chemistry. Okay, any question? A lot of time. <laughs> so uh, I think because I'm still new here, so I just uh, can share a little bit of my experience. <laughs> So my research is based on that. That's all graphene. I'm synthesizing graphene. BSc. Yes. Degree. Yeah, education. education. Uh, I'm from education background. So I jump into the pure, and I have no master. I am a fast track student. <laughs> so and I involved in graphene, the hottest, the growing uh, materials. So maybe if you are undergraduate, uh, you can start from now, uh, or you can. Which, which subject should we excel to? Graphene, materials, uh, material science, material science. Yeah, if you are handling with electricity, electric. Hmm. Uh, yeah, quantum dot and whatever. Because if you are studying theoretically, yes, you are studying with uh, solid state, solid state physics. Yeah. But for me, uh, you have studied the modern physics, right? Modern physics, I think just introduction. <laughs> this introduction, because this is the science, a material science. Do you want to you don't, you don't want to ask how much I sell for my product? <laughs> because we have an MOU with uh, Lembaga Getah. So we have proposed commercialization value. Just berapa persen je <laughs> for super capacitor. So you are selling your graphene? Uh, now we are not selling but we are collaborate. So we just, uh, they will give us the material. So we synthesize and give them the uh, graphene. But until now, I'm not uh, getting to get a single layer because my study based on the graphene oxide, reduced graphene oxide, that's all. And I implement as a nanofiller in nanocomposite materials. So... Single layer. That's right. Uh, because uh, why I use natural blood tests? Because I see that uh, our demand in industry nowadays need a uh, device with a flexible, high flexibility. So that's why I use natural blood tests because this has a high trends, high flexibility and can be bendable. So I use natural blood tests instead of other synthetic polymers or, um, synth uh, or other polymers, uh, conducting polymers. So I'm trying to reduce the price. So maybe uh, my research uh, will continue on sensor, graphene on sensor, with gas sensor. So I'm studying on gas sensor now. So I hope, uh, maybe you are now second year. So please join me, join our team uh, to, <laughs> to synthesize graphene. Okay, so um, I think uh, you have study about graphene? No. <laughs> yep, simple. Because I just uh, uh, extract the graphene from the rod of graphite. Oh, okay. CBD is, for me, for my opinion, is quite uh, expensive. Oh, because in my lab uh, we also use CBD for synthesizing carbon nanotubes. Yeah. Oh no, we are uh, that one we use waste material. 
Minyak masak Minyak masak terpakai Minyak longkang Chicken fat High amount for synthesizing graphene. Quite a good output for CNT. Yeah. Oh, chemicals. Okay, okay. Oh. So the graphene part is not that high, but we get accidentally we get a lot of CNT. Oh. Accidentally get. Because we are trying to get graphene. Uh, is this Early on in our experiment, we tried to get graphene, but we got CNT. Oh, all right. So you have test your electrical conductivity for graphene? Uh, electrical conductivity for comparable to the SMT one is not comparable because it's hard to get a single continuous layer but the CCP, the RGO, uh, the chemical, the electrical chemical one you can get almost comparable to the the board the oh. Oh, oh, I see oh, okay. that one is graphene? Huh? that one is graphene or graphene outside? graphene, graphene. graphene. Uh, single layer graphene Oh, okay. FTIR is actually the easiest way to make it between. FTIR. You can use a but it's not very. No. Okay, I use for graphene, characterization of graphene, I use uh, for structural, FSM, uh, for high end, HRTEM, TEM. HRTEM and TEM, so. <laughs> Uh, FTIR So optical Optical Are you FTIR because uh, Because I No I I introduce a fact ten, So I want to see the bonded uh, Yeah the, yep. So UVVs uh, Raman Raman for sure <laughs> For the quality The quality of uh, graphic production So I use Raman uh, FM just for certain certain and other than that uh, for nano composite just the same uh, but uh, IV four point pro four point pro so for super capacitor I use CD just this just <laughs> okay sorry so. So any anyone here doing applied like physics? Applied physics. Who are from applied physics? No. <laughs> uh, doing applied physics, we need to take material science. Uh, uh yeah. Supposing so for those things, so I think for most of us, we need pure physics. Pure physics. Oh, okay. So That's why. Great, great. Either medical or pure. Hmm. For apply. Oh. Okay, okay. So then I think uh, maybe this uh, this semester or this semester you taking any final? No. Probably next year. Next year. Happy because oh it's okay. I have assistant. <laughs> no, no, you are uh, in what? Uh, MSc. Okay. Second, second, first year. Final year. Yes, final year. <laughs> So, uh, for your research, are you doing any research now? For right now? No, I'm so not starting yet. Plan My plan? Uh, I have uh, stated that I want to further in sensor, graphene in sensor. So, graphene in sensor, instead of that, uh, I'm now I'm 
I will collaborate with the maybe Australian <laughs> for that one is project and the yeah for sensor. So I think for now I want to further my research on sensor because I see the sensor has a, a very bright potential for the film because I'm because uh, my expertise only in uh, what we call a maybe a greener or simpler method to produce graphene. So I think um, I want to explore uh, on sensor, but by using. Uh... There's a, <laughs> a suggestion before because uh, we have energy studies. In yeah. The so yeah, we have for example. In theory, if you can get a higher, higher carbon concentration of biochar, you can use it as a source for uh, oh. coffee. Because uh, this is mainly just uh, carbon hydrogen and oxygen. Uh, and I think if you can use it uh, efficiently, you can get uh, better quality of graphene uh, for a uh, slightly low cost. Oh, using your method. By using your method, uh, have you measured or have you weighed how much you get for a graphene? By each other, I use initial carbon. Oh, okay. So, anyone, anyone planning to study graphene? Anyone plan to uh, come and join me? Inshallah. <laughs> Uh, those applied physics would be interested in Applied physics, huh? Yeah. Actually, I'm not uh, concern, concentrate more on graphene. So, I will expand this research to uh, maybe uh, other materials. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. No, no. Uh, uh, actually, I have no experience on implement graphene in uh, sensors. So, uh, but for now, I think uh, sensors are getting growing uh, bright. So, I think uh, graphene is the most uh, materials to be implemented in sensors. But for now, I have no. I have. Uh, not yet doing any research on sensors. So, yeah. Uh, maybe gas sensor. Gas sensor. If I want to expand my research, I just see that I can functionalize. First, I can functionalize because uh, my uh, part of my research most on surfactant by using surfactant on producing graphene. So you see by functionalization and then by improving the efficiency of dye sensitized solar cells or by cooperating the or the nanostructures of KO2, titanium dioxide. Okay, and by using uh, graphene or other carbon materials. Okay. So, and also for sensors. <laughs> yes. Okay. You have question, Naim? No. Okay. Uh, for next week, we will be having a uh, talk about GPR ground penetrating radar seen beneath the surface by the Tazu. Wow. So, okay. So, we have a lot of jokes. Oh, okay. Yeah, actually, I'm I'm teaching modern physics, so I'm not really recognized the uh, applied applied students. Yeah. Uh, so, do you have you fit in to me? Me, please no. Azrael. 
Okay, thank you, Doctor. Okay, welcome. Hope we can see you again, Doctor. Insha'Allah. <laughs>